It's a blowy old day today, and it's an anniversary of sorts. It's um, one year since I bought and reviewed the new Chinese wind turbine that's been sitting in a box on my office floor for the last 12 months. And it's been 10 years since I put this, my homemade wind turbine, up the pole. So, everything needs a bit of a squirt of um, penetrating oil and a greasing to make sure it's going to come down slowly and not end up uh, squashing things in the yard. So, um, as I say, it's been 10 years since I've had this thing down and I'm just having to remember exactly how I did it, which what attaches to which and where I put what and then I can get the thing down. But you'll see that I've got a jack pole coming out from the main mast at 90 degrees. That fits into a socket and the jack pole, believe it or not, his old man telling stories about his youth. When I worked in the circus, we actually used jack poles quite a lot for putting up the king poles. Those are the four huge poles that support the big top and they go around the um, main ring of the circus, the performance area. That's so that you don't have a centre pole in the middle of the performance area and it also gives you four really good points to attach trapeze and other equipment from later in the show. Anyway, anyway, I digress. I digress. I'm going to get this thing down on the ground and take the old wind turbine off the top and make slight modifications to the mounting point and fit the new one year old Chinese wind turbine. 400 watt, 12 volt, unmodified because I want to put it up in this blustery windy spring weather and get a good baseline of what a standard 400 watt 12 volt Chinese wind turbine performs like. Then I'm going to bring it down again and we're going to do some very simple modifications to it stage by stage. I'll probably do it in two different stages. I've got a whole heap of magnets which I'm going to glue onto the rotor and we're going to see how it changes its characteristics doing it in a couple of stages. So anyway, down comes the mast. i am just got a little bit of extra um, looseness in the rope here and I'm going to let it go and then as it tips over it will get heavier and heavier and that's when the winch comes in. I should of course have disconnected the power, which I did, but I should have also slipped in a jumper to um, short out the phases of the wind turbine. That'll stop it spinning as it comes down, which uh, I guess if Mr. Health and Safety arrived by the time the thing gets down to head height, he would be in terrible danger if he was to stand right underneath it. But seeing as what you're looking at is actually just a um, a drone of me, it's a it's a clone drone that I built some years ago that I use in all hazardous situations. I'm actually in my concrete bunker down the end of the street with the rest of my neighbours. I, I herd them all in there for safety whenever I'm doing anything like this. Although getting it wrong sometimes is a real quick way of learning things. There you go. Now you've learned how a jack pole can help you to raise or lower a very tall, heavy mast. We used to do it with vehicles out in the open field. We pegged the bases of the king poles to the ground on big metal plates with stakes driven through them and those pivot on those plates and then we'd uh, put a jack pole in for the initial part of the lift because just by tying a rope to the front end of a four-wheel drive you won't actually get a lifting motion you'll just get a pulling motion so that jack pole helps you to initiate the lift and get it up and going and uh, the leverage 
point changes quite drastically so the pull on the winch changes throughout the lift but it's a great way of getting things done if you're by yourself now I've just whipped the tail off this and we're having a look at the mounting plate now it's been moving on that mounting plate the bolts have come loose or the plastics cracked not sure which but look at that rust it's been up there for years and all weathers the bearings have collapsed but it's still working um, in the back here full of mold and mildew um, but it's been weather tight and it's worked and it's produced power in the worst weather for 10 full years so anyway out with the angle grinder and um, we'll remove the piece of angle iron that I used to uh, make the system work and I'm going to fit another pole extension that I've recently made out of just bits of scrap that I had lying around and that's got the flange that comes with the Chinese wind turbine sitting um, on top of it so I'll get that centralised inside the main pole. Oh, there you go, job done. Get that out of the way, out of the way. Throw it under the tree for a while. I'm just taping the main power wire, the three-phase wire, to a uh, fibreglass tent pole, the same kind that you would get on a small hiker's tent and I'm going to poke that down <laughs> I'll blame the wind for that I'm going to poke that down this new extension tube that I've made up so that we have one continuous wire all the way from top to bottom Now, 60mm pipe inside 80mm pipe is a 20mm gap, so that's 10mm, but we're doing 3 not 4, so they won't be at 90 degrees, so we'll go for 12mm spaces, and it'll be a perfect fit. And I was right. So the first ones, we'll just later hold it laterally so that everything is concentric. I love throwing those words around. And this top set of slugs will fit 50% in, 50% out of the pipe, and I'll put a heavy weld at those three points, and that will secure everything nice and tight. Right, while I've got the welding hat on, I'll just give you a quick welding tip. I'm doing two things here that you can't do if you own a MIG welder. One's weld outside on a windy day, the other is weld galvanized pipe without preparing it first. That's because I use flux cord gasless wire. You need to try it. And now, fellow procrastinators, comes the time where the 400 watt 12 volt Chinese wind turbine comes out of my office for the first time in 12 months and gets dropped on the bench. Make sure all the bits are still in the box. Now we've been through what comes in the box in the previous two videos. There's the stainless steel nuts and bolts. There's some uh, specialist tools for putting it together. And there's very, very simple pictorial explanation of how the thing fits on the pole. The actual user's manual that comes, and it comes with it and explains all about the actual generator is not worth reading at all. You're far better off just figuring things out for yourself. It's written in perfect English. So quite simply, we've got three phase wires. They're all the same. You can attach them in any order to the three phases of the regulator that comes with it. Because there are three phases and because extension lead for 
uh, AC wiring is the most is the most cost effective way of buying wire in that particular gauge. I've used 2.5 millimeter gauge industrial extension lead as my wiring down the pole. Have done for years, works perfectly well. So long as you keep it out of the sunlight because it's not particularly well ultraviolet stabilized, it's as good as any wire you can get. And of course, you've got positive, negative and earth, so three phases. I'm now going to slip some terminals on the end of here and we'll get that connected up. Now I'm going to liberally coat these joins with silicon and I'm also going to put a knot in the wire or I'll, I'll, put, I'll, I'll bundle the wire up over the joint, tape it together so that the connectors aren't carrying the weight of the cable down inside the pipe. And now I'm going to put one bolt in, just loosely, and then I'll fit the other three, centralize the thing, and also put a bead of silicon around the base so that water can't get down the pipe. Then we can put the blades on. Right, I'm about an hour into this job, so it's time for a quick coffee. What I want to show you here is how you can't get this wrong. The blades are beautifully made. I've already weighed them, and they all weigh within one gram of each other. I've um, checked the mould flashing around the edges to make sure there's no daggy bits hanging off it. And what we're doing now is we're just looking at how the blade is shaped so that you can't put it on backwards so that you can't get it in the wrong the wrong way round the most important thing to do once you've got it nipped up and got all the blades just sitting lightly bound is to check your tip measurements now i'm checking all of these and they're all 454 millimeters apart from these two Slight adjustment, and then I can nip it up a bit. But if I go all the way around and make sure they're all at 454 millimeters, tip to tip, I know that I'm going to end up with a nice, quiet, a nice, quiet blade assembly. The nuts on these are captive at the back, and they're also nylock, so that they can't come undone. So you only need the special tool that's provided to do them up. I do them up in stages. It's just like doing the um, cylinder head on a car. You nip them up and then you torque them all down to halfway to what it should be. And then you go around again and torque them down to the full setting. And then just to make sure, go over it and check those tip dimensions again. 454 millimeter. Today's a perfect wind turbine day. Just listen to it. Um, it's not super, super windy. It's just that I've got these big trees above me. And you can hear the wind whispering through the trees. So, certainly not a perfect installation site. Right, one last job before we go up the pole, and that is to short out the phases. That's going to stop the wind turbine spinning wildly as it uh, moves into position. All you need to do is just put any kind of a jumper wire um, between the phases. It doesn't have to be all three, but all three is best. I've just got a jumper wire here, so I'll plug that in into two places and that will put a load on it and stop it spinning madly.
the camera doesn't do it justice. It's belting around far faster than my DIY version that I've been running for the last 10 years. Right, here we are on the bench next to the battery I'm charging. On the left, you'll see the wind controller that comes with the wind turbine, and you'll see that it has a low wind speed boost. What that means is that it's a two-stage charger. The first stage puts a very little load on the wind turbine. That gets it up and spinning, and then when it gets up to a decent speed, that's when more strain, more charge is pulled out of the uh, turbine giving you more power. So here we are, we're only showing sort of three, four, five watts. It's very fluky wind. Everything's changing. At night when I've got a more steady wind, I have had up to 20, uh, 20 watt charge and in gusts I achieved almost 40 watts. So <laughs> it's not huge. But for $199, I'm well chuffed. I'm going to leave it up there for a few weeks, get a good baseline, and then when I know what the average capability of the thing is, then we can start modifying it. Hey, I know, I know, it's been a year, all right? And now the video's here. I've been really busy with more pressing things. Honestly, while my old wind turbine has been producing power, I've just left it and let it produce power. But with the geopolitical instability that's going on at the moment, anything could happen. And I've decided to get myself hyper-organized when it comes to preparing for that time when we really have to stand on our own two feet. So, it's up the pole. I'm doing tests. I've made no modifications. This is an absolutely standard 400 watt Chinese wind turbine. All I've done, if you refer to this video here, you'll see that I've pulled it apart, checked everything, cleaned it, made it as good as I can make it without spending any money on it, and then put it back together. And now it's on the pole, and we're doing some baseline figures. I'm going to leave it up there for a few weeks, and then we're going to whip it down, and I'll do the mods. We're going to hot rod this wind turbine, see what we can get out of it.